Axis Tools version 9 adds support for Houdini Python 3 builds. HIP defaults is new to version 9 and it allows you to set defaults when you create a new HIP file. We can change options like the play bar so we can set the default start and end point, the FPS, uh, whether it's real time and the looping behavior. We've got camera options which will be applied when the camera node is placed. Then we also have default scene down here, which basically if you create a bunch of nodes, create like your default settings, then click use current HIP as default, select the networks that you want to save from. And then when you load a new HIP file, it will place all these nodes by default. So it's sort of like a HIP template, if you will. And then we have environment variables. So if you right click here, you can add a new variable. Um, just type in the variable name, doesn't need to have a dollar sign, and then type in what it will expand to. And then you also have the option to apply this on specific actions like loading a new HIP file, loading an existing one, or saving the HIP file itself. And finally, we've got user scripts, which is pretty powerful actually. It will allow you to define a script, you know, one or more scripts that just like the environment variables can be applied on loading, creating, or saving the HIP file. And what you do here is you just link to a Python script file, and then whenever one of these actions happens, the script will be executed. As soon as you click save, any of these actions that you, you do, so loading, creating a new HIP file, whatever it is, um, it happens off the jump. You don't need to restart Houdini or anything like that. Uh, and you can enable or disable any of these options with the big enable button at the top. A final thing to mention is if you have a studio license, uh, all options will be saved inside of the Access Tools directory. So if all your machines are linked to this single location for Access Tools, then you can have studio-wide defaults. Control or command clicking on append copied will bring up the append options which allows you to do a number of things like set defaults that will be used every time you append. You can change append to prepend, so it will prepend the nodes instead of appending them. You can change the nodes that are selected after the append happens. You have the option to append to your current selection as normal, or you can select nodes from the node tree, which allows you to append to a bunch of different networks at one time. Bulk apply parameters allows you to take one or more parameters from a node and quickly apply that value to other nodes in your network. Right click on the parameter that you want to use as your source, go to extras and click bulk apply parameter. First thing we see is our source node. Bear in mind that this tool will only apply to nodes that are the same type as your loaded node. Below this are the parameters that we just right clicked on. You might see more than one if you right clicked on a vector. You can easily add parameters via this list pop-up here or by dragging and dropping parameters onto the interface. You can remove individual parameters by right-clicking on this drop-down. Next, we're gonna select the nodes that we want to apply to. And you've got a few ways to do this. First one uses your current node selection. Second option lets you select a network and then it will iterate through and look at all the children of this network. And if it finds any of the same node type, it will apply to these nodes. Finally, there's select node from tree, which is self-explanatory. Just click here and select nodes that you want to add. Like the parameter dropdown, you're also able to remove nodes by right clicking. Set type decides how we apply the parameter value. Selecting plain text will just set the parameter to the current value or expression. Relative or absolute reference will point the parameter to the one on your loaded node, just like if you were to copy relative references manually. Next up, we've got an uh, addition to material assign. So now what you can do is you can select and if you right click on a material, you can move materials to a different network. And this will maintain any parameter references to the material. So if I just move it to the matnet right now, they're all nest inside of subnetworks and inside of a matnet in there. But if I move them all, and as you can see, they've all been moved and uh, all these are still referenced. So if I was to go and um, you know jump to this node, which you can do by shift dragging onto the network editor, um, you'll see that it's now referencing the network that we moved to. 
The instance or salt now allows you to reorder and delete one or more instances with this little UI dialog that pops up when you click on reorder. There's now a drop down axis menu in the Houdini main menu now. So it's just sort of an amalgamation of all shelf tools and uh, a few right click menu tools as well. File manager has seen some new changes as well. There's an added options menu that contains a number of things, including an option to define new sequence variables. So say you're using tops and you're wedging a simulation, maybe you want to use a cluster num or something like that. You can add that to the, um, the terms now that will be searched alongside all the existing terms. Now, when you select nodes inside of Houdini, um, they'll be highlighted inside the file manager if they exist. So you can quickly go and find specific files that you've got selected or a network of files. And also in the options dropdown, you can select get selection from node selection, which will do as it says on the tin. Then you've got user parameters. Now, this allows you to add any string parameter that you want to file manage and edit it and use the replace function so um, say that you've got a bunch of file references, maybe a bunch of object merges, and you want to turn them into relative references or absolute references so you can copy it about. What you can do is you can add these parameters and then open up the replace dialog. And we have a new option that allows you to convert from uh, relative to absolute and vice versa. While we're in replace, you can also version up and down. So say you've got a number that is prefixed with uh, a lowercase v, just stick in v and then add uh, or subtract, or you can set the value of the version uh, to a fixed number. Selecting image files allows you to right click and you can convert image files to a different color space. This is a new tool. It's also available in Houdini. If you right click on any string parameter, you can convert that image in any of its associated files if it's a part of a sequence. Extract has seen some minor changes as well. So if you right click on the location box, you can select from the node tree, or if you've got a node selected, if you select current network, it will grab the closest network that you can actually extract to. You can also do get parent, which will get the parent of whatever's in that location box. And you can grab the last location, which will enter the last location that you extracted to into that box. You also down here have the option to set relative paths. So your object merge will have a relative path instead of an absolute one if you check this box.